Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today we're taking a look at a new keyboard, the Inky 75 from Elect Fox. Um, this will be the first keyboard I've taken a look at from them and will be the last individual review of 75% videos before I get to my tier list video and there's a lot of keyboards in there. Bridge 75 is still in transit. Um, it may be lost, so unfortunately that will not be a part of this. Um, when I do get it, I will do an individual review, but I have to get through this. I have like three other videos that I have to, and one of those videos is the 75% tier list video. But today we're taking a look at the Inky 75. This is 75% aluminum via keyboard from Elect Fox and I'm going to go ahead and take off this wrap because it is very glaring. Now we've got a pretty hefty box. This is actually probably one of the heaviest boxes so far. I'm wondering if there's anything in there or if this is really that heavy of a keyboard. But as we can see, Inky 75, 81 key, uh, double shot PBT in three colors, housing material aluminum and tempered glass. Okay, PCB gasket, 1.2 millimeter black core single key slotting flex cuts, hot swap PCB, and a PP plate. PP, not polycarbonate, PP. Different type of plastic. We've got Poron, IXP, PET, EB, EPDM, and PET. So two layers, PET, probably one below the PCB, one on the PCB. Now we have got USB 2.4, Bluetooth 5.2. Well, that's the first one I've seen that's 5.2, I think. SBS customized switched software via. Okay, well, it definitely seems like it's fully featured. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it and see what we've got. All right, so before taking a look at the keyboard, I do like to take a look at what they include in the box. It looks like we have a pretty decent manual here, and fully in English and it has all of the functionality, everything that's already been pre-programmed into the via layers. And we have a nice accessories box. Let's see what we got in here. We've got a standard wire switch and keycap puller. We have a fairly long, it looks a little bit longer than most of the uh, six footers, although it could be a six footer, um, rubberized USB-A to USB-C cable. We have a 2.4 gigahertz dongle. Unfortunately, it is not branded, so I will have to, uh, what I usually do is just cut out a sticker and put it on top, and then I'll write what brand it is on there. So in case it gets lost, I know what it goes to. And it looks like we have some extra switches. I'm always appreciative when extra switches are included because you never know. I mean, switches, usually they don't break, but things happen sometimes. All right, these are branded. SPM or WDS. <laughs> um, they're a little bit heavier of a linear. They are long pull and they have a nice glassy type bottom out. Very well. And here we are with the Inky 75 from Elect Fox. Um, they do include a nice dust cover that fits perfectly over here. And we also see that we are heat shrink wrapped. Now this is, um, manufacturers do this so that when you receive it, you can inspect everything, make sure that there's no dents, no mars, no damage whatsoever. Because if you do catch it, at this point you can leave it like this and be like, hey, I haven't unwrapped it, there's damage on it. Um, that way they can take it back to their manufacturer and say, hey, and get credit for it. But Taking a quick look at this, it looks like everything is fine and dandy. So we're going to go ahead and tear this off. And it looks like that's where the tempered glass is. Wow, that is cool. You have an interesting finish. There's actually a bit of sparkle on that black finish, though. It's it's not rough, but it's not like fully smooth, though. I got to say, I love that mirror. That is really nice. All right, laying it down, it looks like we have a standard compact 75% layout. We have a delete 
for F13 and a home key. Nicely laid out with the home end page up, page down. And I'm gonna guess it's probably insert underneath delete. I hope it is. We have a very nice engraved logo in there and we have a very hefty keyboard. I mean, I don't know what the weight is yet, but I would guess if this is not the heaviest of the 75% keyboards I've reviewed, it's probably going to be one of the heaviest. Now, I do like the colorway that we have here. We have gold legends on a black background for the alphas, as well as for alternating on the F, F row. And then we have like a beige with the black alphas on some of the keys with gray and white alphas. So it's, a, it's like a combination of two or three different um, colorways, but to me, it looks pretty unique. It's probably their own. I like when they do that. There's 16 million plus colors out there. We can come up with some new color colorways for keycap sets. So I'm glad that they put this together. Although I could be wrong, this could be copying a colorway that I just haven't seen yet because there are so many of them. That sounds lovely that hits that perfect pitch of asmr for me it's just i don't know i know some people out there are like oh i just got way too much foam if in the end it sounds good and the keyboard still works why would i care if it has too much foam I like how this sounds. I, I I don't understand how, I mean, yes, this is very subjective and some people like one thing and some people like another, but when people are going out there telling people, take out that foam out of there, it's like, but I like how it sounds. Well, take it out. And then they don't like it when they take it out. It's like, no, that sounds better. It's like, well, maybe for you, it sounds better, but for them, if they like the way it is, let them leave it. This one is one of those, the few, keyboards, although they're coming becoming a lot more commonplace nowadays, but it's one of those few keyboards that it's like, if I never modded this, I would be happy with the way that it sounds and the way that it feels. But knowing me, I'm going to be getting in there at some point. Let's go ahead and take a look at these stabilizers, see what we have under there. All right, I got switch and key cap come with me. Now for the key caps, they are double shot. Let's see what kind of thickness we have here. Looks like we have 1.5 millimeter thickness for the keycaps, which is perfect. For me, that's uh, kind of the sweet spot. I appreciate anything one millimeter and above. 1.2, 1.3, it really starts getting good. 1.5 is really nice, though I've seen a few that are 1.6, 1.7. Obviously, you get a little bit any thicker, you're going to have interference. But these are nice PBT keycaps and very smooth, very nice. Let's check out these stabilizers that are on the PC plate. Uh, just to see real quick, we do have the PET layer on the PCB with the IXPE above that, or the hi-fi layers, as they like to call it. Oh, well, this is a new one on me. This is probably one of the first of these 75% keyboards that I've tested that it has no lubrication on there whatsoever, but they sound fine. I don't know how much lubrication would change how these sound, but they sound pretty good. But just in case you don't like plate mounted stabilizers, we do have screw in stabilizer support on the PCB. Yay! It's always a plus. Um, I mean, you can always get better plate mounted stabilizers, but at some point, you know, having it screwed in is really just going to be the best option. But these actually lock them back into place. They're quite well attached. They really have no wiggle. I'm just surprised that they sound as good as they do without any lubrication. Absolutely no ping to the case. It's nice and clear. 
So we really do have a lovely built keyboard. If we take a look at it, we do have that standard wedge design and with the two parts. Actually, after taking a closer look at it, I wanna say this is closer to the rainy construction. Yep, and I'm right. The screws are actually right there and they appear to be probably an M5, I would guess. I'd have to pull out my toolkit and I don't have it handy. Um, I will be coming back. I have not wanted to open or modify any of the 75% keyboard so that when I do the head to head, they're going to be stock. After that, I will be coming back to these keyboards to not only open them up, mod them, switch out switches, keycaps, remove foam, add foam, tape, uh, different things. But we do see here that we have, I personally, I don't have a problem with it because understanding how how much extra work it is just to add an extra cutout. But it's also not going to be that expensive. But I do know that a lot of people do not like that switch under there. It just means that you're going to have to carry one of these with you if you take your keyboard with you. Now, granted, I am personally of the opinion that, I mean, if I'm going to be working in an office for a little while, I'm just going to bring a keyboard and leave it there and, you know, probably be an aluminum keyboard. If I'm going to be lugging it around, I'm going to have a plastic keyboard. Um, a lot of times I just go from place to place, meet with people impromptu places, whether it's, you know, at a coffee shop, um, a restaurant, sometimes like open conference rooms for those um, office, you know, spaces that have like, not a conference room, but a lunch area, like a shared lunch area for all the offices. Anyway, I feel that it's just easier because I've already got a laptop, sometimes even two. Sometimes I have printouts, then accessories, battery packs, everything like that. It's just easier just to throw a plastic keyboard in there. So I'm one that when I use wireless, um, I use it sparingly. I usually will turn off the RGBs, um, so I've had a few keyboards that as soon as they turn on, I, it, it honestly, it, sometimes it surprises me that not only are some people just not aware of mechanical keyboards or that there's a difference, but that there's actually keyboards with lights on them <laughs> because there's been on more than one occasion where I've pulled out a keyboard, an RGB just comes on automatically and you know, all of a sudden, boom, and people will be like, whoa what keyboard is that it's got it's got rgb i just find it uh, i i guess i have a pretty tight-knit group of friends and you know just mechanical keyboards were all techies the history buckling spring all of that so it's just um it's funny to find people here and there that just um don't even realize you know what world there is and and practically each one of those times i end up spending a good 10 15 minutes going over mechanical keyboards and how the switches can be you know replaced and you can get different keycaps and then you know they're like oh i think i want to get one <laughs> so i find it funny because it's anywhere from whether it's a sales people um managers um I mean, just a whole range of different people. Um, I rarely ever, I mean, yes, there's times when I deal with technical people at other companies, but a lot of times I'm taking, a salesperson is talking to me about, you know, developing an ad hoc reporting system. So they just may not be as technical. Now, there's been a few that, that don't get me wrong, that have surprised me and like, oh, hey, that's a mechanical keyboard. What is that? Is that a da 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 Like, oh, you know your keyboards. But that's rare. That's more the exception rather than the rule. But I still, I just find it endearing that some people don't know that these keyboards exist and sharing with them and opening their eyes to the world of mechanical keyboards. On the one hand, makes me feel, you know, happy because I get to share something and they get to learn something. But on the other hand, 
I'm like, I hope I didn't just like create a hole in that guy's wallet. <laughs> because I have had people literally email me and like, hey man, I'm between this keyboard and this keyboard. And you know, they're looking at spending three, four, five hundred dollars. And I'm like, well, how about start with like something like this since it's your first? Oh, no, no, I want something nice. Uh, so I just find that kind of entertaining. But I don't know if I, like I said, you know, obviously people are responsible for their own spending, but did I just give them a new hobby to throw money at? <laughs> Let's see what this keyboard looks like plugged in. Gotta say, I like the finish. I know there's been some people that are like, Oh, this keyboard, not, not this one in particular, but other keyboards have a sparkly finish. I actually kind of like it in the black because black is usually serious. So that sparkles makes me think of space. I mean, maybe I'm just pushing, but that's what it makes me think of. And, and, and I like that. Um, like I said, I think I am pretty confident that most people are going to take this keyboard out. And they're going to be happy with how it feels because it has flex, but it's not, you know, you're not on a trampoline. You have just enough flex to where it feels good. And it sounds lovely out of the box. It has a nice, crisp, clean sound to it. Um, the marble tile, creamy, um, I know a lot of these adjectives, everyone has a different idea of what it means. So I try to stay away from it. It's a deeper toned. It has a pleasant pop, poppy in my opinion, but it's on the deeper end instead of the clackier end, which would be a little bit more high pitched. Just the specs. Today we are taking a look at the Inky 75. It is a three mode 75% aluminum keyboard comes with a gasket mount PP plate, a three and five pin south facing hot swap compatible PCB with both hi-fi and dampening layers. It is preloaded with matcha buttermilk linear switches and double shot PBT keycaps that come measuring in at 1.5 millimeters. It also has a very nice tempered glass weight and is via programmable. It is loaded with a 4,000 milliamp hour battery and comes weighing in at 2,095 grams. The chin of this keyboard sits at 22 and a half millimeters off the typing surface, while the back sits at 40.5 millimeters, providing for a typing angle of 10 degrees. The MSRP for this keyboard is $69. Links below. So yeah, one the one of the things that really is going for this keyboard is its price. $69. Nice. I mean, I just, it blows my mind because not even a year ago could you consider a keyboard of this caliber as loaded as it is, three mode, two kilos, for $69. I mean, it's just, it's complete insanity. Via, yes, it's not QMK, but it is Via, so at least I can program it. Um, I am just completely amazed at the products that are coming out nowadays. Um, they just, they just continue to get better and better, and the price just continues to get lower. It's almost like it's a race to the bottom, but what's the best we can give you for the least amount of money. So honestly, I think the competition is probably good for the community as a whole, because now we have not only a much broader selection of keyboards, we have keyboards that are quite well manufactured, quite well made, fully loaded, full of features for under a hundred dollars. This is, <laughs> this is $19 above 50. I mean, I just, there's plastic keyboards out there that sell still for over a hundred dollars. Why? I don't know. I would much rather an aluminum keyboard for non-moving purposes to sit on my desk, maybe to take it to the office and just leave it there. But I just, it's, it's hard to justify and say, Hey, you should buy that 
75% plastic keyboard. How much is it? $79.99. And so it's $10 more. It's like, I, 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 I mean, unless you need something lighter and you prefer how the plastics out. Okay. I mean, but at this price, it's just, it's hard to say, Hey, I don't like this keyboard. I, I really, I mean, I can't think of a flaw with it. I know that some people will consider the power toggle or the switch underneath the caps lock an issue, and that's fine. I think that for most people, though, it won't be that much of an issue because you're either going to be in wire wireless mode. So, you know, you just keep that on. It'll go to sleep after however long, or you're just going to keep it wired you'll never have to mess with the switch so but at the price that it's at it's just hard not to justify um a keyboard of this caliber of this quality of this set of features it really i mean it can have half the features and still be priced at the same price and i'd probably say it's still a good deal granted depending on the features but for a company that i mean I've only just recently seen them. They really seem to have a grasp of the market and they have a really nice keyboard. So this is going to be the last one. I, the Bridge 75. Um, I don't know when it's going to get here. It looks like it's been lost in the um, in the post. And I was also I'm also doing the Loop 75, but that's going to be a little ways out as well. So for right now, this is going to be the last of the 75% that I'm going to use for my 75% tier list video. I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for it and asking me for it. And I apologize uh, between just so many things that have happened, family affected from the storms, being sick, nearly breaking my ankle. Life's just been a little bit crazy as of late. So I do apologize that this has taken so long, but I just received this one. So I, I knew I wanted to get this one into the game or at least into the round. And like I said, the 75%, I'm going to do my best to kind of compare apples to apples and give you my opinion as to which I think are better. By no means is that going to be, you know, the ultimate word. It's just my opinion based on the now four or 500 keyboards I've reviewed. I don't know. I've lost track at this point. I've had a chance to use test, open up mod keyboards from, you know, $10 all the way up to several hundred dollars. And um, so I feel that my opinion, while it's not authoritative in any way, it does come from a place of experience. So um, I'm just going to do my best to try to communicate to you guys, especially for anybody that's like, I am looking for a 75% keyboard and what are my options? I want aluminum and what are the better, better ones that have come out recently? And that's basically what I'm going to go with. Like I said, the bridge 75, I do believe it to be very similar as to another one that I'll be reviewing. I won't know until I get it, but if, if it is, I will mention it when I do the individual review for the Bridge 75. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed the video today. Um, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, please leave them down in the comment section below. I do my best to answer comments as soon as possible. For everybody out there in YouTube land, I want to wish you an awesome day. And until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.